Good morning, church. We just want to invite anyone who's still lingering outside to come inside and join us for worship. Woohoo! Uh, my name is Kirsten, and I'm the high school coordinator, so I help lead our high school ministry. And this here next to me is Luke. He's one of our students. So, Luke, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you all and I are up here today? Hello, my name is uh, Luke Corngable. I am about to be a senior at Saramon Valley High, and today is student service. Amen. And so tell us a little bit, but what happens on a student Sunday? So student service is, uh, student Sunday is pretty cool. Uh, basically, the students get to take over uh, service, and so uh, you'll hear a, a sermon and uh, interviews from some of the seniors. Amen. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Um, so we wanted to start off this Sunday the same way we start off our rock services on a Monday. So we're going to ask you to stand. And what we love to do is we love to have one of our students like read a psalm. And so we just want to encourage you guys to put out your hands if you want to just be in a posture of receiving and just like help, you know, just I like to close my eyes, just try and focus on, on the words of the psalm and receive it as a prayer, as a blessing and make these words, because this is a psalm of like praise uh, towards God, just make these words um, your own as you're listening. And we just want to ready our hearts to, to enter into a time of worship. So, Luke. Psalm 145, a psalm of praise of David. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commend your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awe-inspiring works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. Amen. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for the words of this psalm that remind us of your greatness, Lord, and also reminds us of your faithfulness throughout all generations, Lord. And so on this Student Sunday, we just ask you, Lord, that you would just make us sensitive to your presence, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would just fill this place with your presence. We make room for you. And we ask that you would just have your way here today. Lord, help us just to surrender ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our souls, our spirits to just receive from you and also just to minister to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. We just give you all the glory. And everyone say, Amen. Savior's robe as he walks. 
I've been held in your hands From the moment I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God is worthy there is 
no one, only you, Jesus. And who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only you, Jesus. You are the infinite God of the ages. Yeah, you chose to my heart, your dwelling place. You healed my brokenness, showed me your glory. So I have songs of thanks, not even angels sing. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy?
dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day and that we can all come together and worship you, Lord. I just pray um, that everyone's able to open their ears and their eyes to hear and see your works and all that you want us to know, Lord. I thank you that we get to, as students, lead worship and um, just be in your light, Lord, um, and that you say in 2 Timothy 4, 12, um, don't let others look down upon you because you're young, but be an example in faith, conduct, love, purity, and speech, Lord. You are just so, so good. You are so good for giving us this light in the hearts that we have. Um, and Lord, I just pray that as we um, go through this service, that we really just see you through everything, that this room is filled with love and joy, um, despite any other circumstances, Lord, that we focus on you. Thank you so, so, so much for this day. In your mighty, holy, and beautiful name, Lord, amen. All right, you guys, you can have a seat. How amazing was that worship from our student worship team? I felt like I was just led to the feet of Jesus. That was so good. You guys are in for a treat this morning. It is Student Sunday, and I know I'm a little biased, but I think I would say this is probably my favorite Sunday of the whole year, and so I know that you guys are going to leave feeling encouraged, so we're so glad that you are here with us. If I have not met you yet, my name is Sarah, and I serve on staff as the director of our middle school ministries, and we're so glad that you guys are here. Hey, if you are new, or even if you just feel new, we would love love to get connected with you. We truly want CPC to feel like a family. And so if we haven't met you yet, we would love if you would join us after service at the guest services tent. We have a fun little gift for you and we just want to connect you and meet with you. And if you're worshiping with us online, we are not leaving you out. We would love to connect with you guys too. You can click that little QR code and we will send you a gift and find a way to get you connected. We're so glad that you guys are with us too. As you were driving in, you might have seen some four, the valley signs or the big four sign that's out here. And here at CBC, we like to say that we are for the valley, which basically means that we believe that being for others, the way that God is for us can truly change the world. And we wanna be a church that is all about loving and serving our community and ultimately God's people. And so one awesome way that we get to do that is every year we have the For the Valley Scholarship. And this is a $3,000 scholarship that we get to award for high school seniors who have gone above and beyond to show that they are for their community. And so we want to announce to you guys the winners of this year's For the Valley Scholarship. So first we have Grace Carpenter who was just up here leading us in worship and just prayed for us. Next, we have Sydney Smith. Yeah, let's, let's clap for each one, I love it. We have Tara Shelvum, and we have Connor Eaves. And so, congratulations to our scholarship winners. Thank you to you guys for being an example to us, the church, of how to love God's people as he calls us to be. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, hey, as we move into a time of giving, I would like to first remind you that we have been kicking off our legacy campaign. And so if you were with us a couple weeks ago, we went through a couple week series where we talked about our legacy campaign and the way that we get to accelerate our mission to reach people for Jesus. And so if you have not yet pledged to the legacy campaign and you feel this little stirring in your heart, it is not too late. You can still pledge to give to our campaign to be a part of the amazing work that God is already doing in CPC and will be doing in the future. We are confident of that. And so if you would like to give, you can pick up a pledge card on your way out. It is not too late. Make sure that you join us next weekend as Tyler is going to be announcing how much our church has pledged which is awesome, super exciting. I personally am so excited because we are going to be building a new student center, which is amazing. And so we are super, super excited. And we don't want you guys to miss out on being a part of that if you feel like the Lord is calling you. 
And so again, as we move into a time of giving, uh, I just wanna take a second just to say thank you. As I get to work in middle school ministries in our student ministries department, I feel like I get this really cool firsthand glimpse of your guys' generosity. And the ways that you guys give, I don't even know if you know how big of a difference it actually makes and the ways that the Lord is using your generosity. You're about to hear from some of our students and you'll probably hear most of them say that one of the most influential parts of their faith journey has been our camps and our trips. And if any of you have ever been on one of the student ministries trips or you've ever been to camp, you'll know how God moves and works in incredible ways when we go to camp, for example. And so through your generosity, we're able to send kids to camp who maybe couldn't afford it. We're able to run our ministries and really care for the students of our valley. And so I just want to say thank you for your generosity. And if you would like to give, you guys can give on the app, on the website, or you can drop a check in the back as well. So would you guys pray with me? God, firstly, uh, we thank you for Student Sunday. We thank you that as Gracie explained, God, in your word, it says that no matter what age we are, God, you are moving and working and we have a role to play. And so we thank you for the students in our church and in our valley for the ways that you have met them, for the ways that they love you, God, and are making a difference for your kingdom. And so I pray that as we hear just some of their stories today, God, that you will encourage us as listeners for how you are always moving and always working in our lives, God. And I also pray that you will encourage the students and those who are sharing. God, that they are seen by you, they are known by you, that you have created them for a purpose, that you have good works in store for them, God. So we thank you for that and pray a blessing over our students, God. And God, we also pray a blessing over our offering. We admit, Jesus, that every single thing that we have is a gift from you. And so God, we pray that you will encourage us to be generous, God to find joy in giving and being generous into the work that you are doing. And we pray that you multiply our offerings, God, that you use it for your glory, your mission, and your kingdom. In your name, amen. thing that I've been doing at CPC has been serving on the tech team and in worship and production. I really love serving in tech. Um, I've spent the last six months working as the lighting intern here and it's just been an amazing experience for me getting to meet new community, work together to put on these incredible services that help connect people with God. And it's a really unique opportunity for me who really enjoys lighting and production to be able to use those skills to help people connect with God and create an atmosphere where people are really able to experience Him. The most impactful moment for me here at CPC has definitely been going on trips to Mexico. It's so cool to be able to go with the people I've met here in my community, like Ella, Jack, Drew, and travel down to Mexico and spend all of our time dedicating ourselves to serving others in these loving communities. Mexico is where I was saved by Jesus and I came in literally knowing nobody, um, which was really scary because I was going, first of all, out of the country and not to like Cabo, but to a place where it was gonna be hard physically. And I got on the bus not knowing anyone and I actually had no one to sit with. And walking down the aisle trying to find an empty seat, I found one of my best friends now who eventually led me to the feet of Jesus by the third day of the trip. And it was just like the most beautiful thing because we're still friends now and we still talk about the day when like I sat on the wood and I just cried out to Jesus to um, come into my life and take out things in my heart that I don't need and put in the things I do. But I think the camp, the messages there and the people there were so welcoming. And that was like a moment where I realized that I've never been treated as well as I have by anyone until I met these people. Like 
that friend group, they treated me the best I've ever been treated. I realized like now that that wasn't them, that was Jesus shining through them and I wanted that so bad. One of the ways that God has definitely moved through me and through this community has been in Mexico, houseboats, Hume, um, but definitely one of the most impactful moments for me was when my brother got baptized, just uh, recommitting his faith to God and gave me so much faith and encouragement. Uh, and it's just inspired me to continue pursuing the Lord. This definitely this community and this church has been my biggest rock over the past four years. So much so that even through transferring schools, all my all my friends and community that I kept here, I've uh, remained at this church. And I think my advice would be to find that community for yourself. Well, good morning, church. As you know now, this is our Student Sunday. This is a day that I look forward to and I love, and in part because this is one of those moments in our life together where we create a little bit more of a connection between our students and the rest of us as their church family. And so we've already been led in worship by some of our students. In just a moment or two, we're gonna have the opportunity to hear from several of our students sharing about how God has been at work in their lives. But before I invite those students up here to join me on stage, I wanna share just a brief word of encouragement from scripture for all of us. And where I wanna take us in God's word just happens to be exactly where we left off last week. These past two Sundays, we've been looking at the first half of Philippians chapter two, an incredibly important passage that reframes how we relate to each other by looking deeply at how Jesus relates to us, especially looking at just how far Jesus lowered himself to meet us on our level and how much Jesus was willing to give up, to lift us up to him. And then in Philippians 2, what comes next right after that is a statement that challenges us to be intentional about how we live out our discipleship with Jesus. A statement that challenges us to take seriously the work that God has been doing in our lives. And so it felt very fitting and appropriate to share this passage on a day like this, where we get to hear what God has been doing in the lives of our students. So if you would turn with me to Philippians chapter two, if you have your Bible, or if you wanna open your Bible app on your phone, we're gonna be reading verses 12 and 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. This is the word of the Lord for us today. I want us to spend just a few minutes with this passage. Those two verses are just one sentence, one statement, but there's a lot in there for us to look at. If you've read much of the New Testament, you know that Paul packs a lot into every sentence. As he was putting pen to paper to articulate what God was saying to all of us, Paul never wasted a lot of extra ink on periods, um, but it's not Paul's fault. In fact, this is kind of fun to know, the period was not invented until a few hundred years after the New Testament was written. So if you've ever read some of Paul's letters and thought, and there's a little bit of some run-on sentences here, uh, just imagine writing the Bible without punctuation. Okay, but take a look at how this verse begins. Paul says, therefore, my dear friends, in other words, he's connecting what he's about to say to what we've just studied these last two weeks together. Now that you have looked at who Jesus is, and everything that Jesus has done to humble himself for our sake. And now that you've thought about how that should change your relationships with each other, here's your next step. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to, if I were to cut it off right there, and if you had never read this before, and if I were to ask you to try to finish that sentence, what would you expect the next word to be? Therefore, as you have always obeyed, continue to obey. That's what we would expect, but that's not what Paul writes. It is, however, his train of thought. Paul is writing to followers of Jesus that he has led and taught and pastored, and he has watched them living in obedience. By the way, obedience to whom? Obedience to Paul? 
No, obedience to Jesus. Their lives are now lived differently because they have become followers of Jesus. They are obeying Jesus. And Paul is now encouraging them to continue to pursue that life of discipleship, that life of obedience, and to grow in that. But instead of using the word obey here, what Paul says next in this part is really challenging. The verse says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's a weighty statement, and it's one that I think is easily misunderstood. There's two different ways that we might read that, and one is actually wrong. And the wrong way to read that might just be the easier, more likely way for us to read it. So when we read, continue to work out your salvation, it could easily sound to us like our salvation still needs some work. It could sound like we're maybe supposed to work on our salvation or work for our salvation, as if our salvation were not yet finished or complete, or maybe that our salvation was not yet secure for us. But that is not what this verse is saying. Paul is writing, after all, to people who have already received their salvation in Jesus. And there's one thing that Paul makes abundantly clear in all of his letters throughout the New Testament. It's that Our salvation has been accomplished entirely by Jesus and the work that he has done for us. And it is finished and it is eternally secure because it is in God's hands, not in ours. Can I get a little amen if you agree on that? So what is Paul saying right here? This verse is actually about how we pursue our life of discipleship after we've received the salvation and eternal life that Jesus offers us. Here's what this passage is saying to us. Continue to work out your salvation in your mind, in your heart, in your actions, in your everyday choices. Work out what your salvation means to you. Your salvation has implications for your life today, not just for your eternity after this life is over. So first, Understand what your salvation means for you right now. It's a little bit like when your math teacher used to tell you to show your work, which I found always really annoying. But the idea is the same here. Yes, you have the right answer, but make sure you understand how you got there. Work it out in your mind and in your heart, and of course, in how you live your life too. To work out your salvation means that in everything you do, work out of your salvation. In all the ways that you strive to obey Jesus and follow him and become more like him, all of that should come out of the salvation that you've received from him. Your salvation is now what motivates you to live for him. Not so that you can be saved, but because you have been saved. Okay, but then what about that part where it says fear and trembling? If my salvation has been accomplished by Jesus and if it is secure and I don't need to work for it, why is this telling me to work it out with fear and trembling? Let me ask you a strange question. Have you ever had a near-death experience? I am sure that some of you in here have. I have not, but I have been near people who have. On two different occasions, I was the first on the scene of pretty significant car accidents on the freeway, both of which could easily have been fatal, but thankfully were not. In one, a car was crushed completely under the back end of a big rig. In the other, a car in the fast lane in front of me slid sideways and then flipped over two times. In both of those cases, the driver walked away unharmed. But let me tell you, when you walk away from something like that, there is fear and trembling. And it's not just the kind of fear and trembling from experiencing what did happen. It's a different kind of fear and trembling about what didn't happen. It's a grateful kind of fear and trembling about what could have happened, but what they were saved from. Friends, in a spiritual sense, And in a very real way that's actually much bigger than a car crash, you and I, we have all had a near-death experience. But maybe we haven't fully realized that yet. 
So part of what happens as we reflect on how Jesus has been getting a hold of us and bringing us into relationship with him is that we start to understand more fully what his salvation actually means and even what it is that we've been saved from. This salvation that Jesus has accomplished for us is not about making our lives a little bit better or a little bit more meaningful. It's about bringing us from death to life. And as we grow into that understanding, it actually changes how we follow Jesus and how we obey him. The more we work out our salvation and understand the weight of it, the more we find ourselves obeying and following Jesus out of a sense of gratitude rather than obligation. And then even as we strive to grow in how we obey and follow Jesus, we realize more and more it's actually God working in us that's changing our lives. So look back at how Paul ends this statement. He writes, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Think about how reassuring, how good that is. It is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So even as we put our own effort into how we grow in our discipleship with Jesus, it's actually still God working in us that's getting the work done. And we wanna humbly and gratefully recognize that he's not done with us yet, not with any of us. All of us are just a work in progress, not just our students, all of us. No matter how long you have been following Jesus, you are still just a work in progress. But that's okay, because you know who's gonna get the work done? Him, not us. So as we go back to the very opening of this letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians, we read that reaffirmed in a different way. Paul wrote this incredible statement that I wanna end with. He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That is an encouraging promise for all of us and one that's especially encouraging for our students that are still just starting out in their journey of faith. So as we get to hear from some of our students this morning and get to hear how God has been at work in their lives, it's our hope that that would lead you to reflect on how God has been at work in your life. And so this morning, as you listen, I want to encourage you to think about how you might answer some of the questions that we're going to be asking them. And then in all of that, Praise God who is always at work in our lives, not only bringing us into his salvation, but then changing us and drawing us deeper into relationship with him. Amen? Amen. So would you help me to welcome up some of our high school graduating seniors right now? Perfect. Come on up, you guys. All right, we're going to start with some introductions. Guys, thanks for coming up and joining me up here. Kirsten, do you want to yep, start us off? I will start. Yeah. I will start. My name is Kirsten, and I'm the high school coordinator, so I help lead our high school ministry. And so we just want you guys to tell us who you are, where you are graduating from, and what your plans are for next mm-hmm. year. Yeah, so I'm Todd. Um, I'll be graduating SRV, and I'm going to Baylor University. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ella Beardsley. I go to San Ramon Valley High School, and I'm going to the University of Arkansas next year. Mm -hmm. What's up, guys? My name is Adrian. Uh, I'm also at San Ramon Valley, and I'm not sure what I'm doing next year yet. Okay, all right. Hi, my name is uh, Will Catterton. I go to SRV, and I'm going to Auburn University next year. Nice. Nice. Hi, I'm Paige Carpenter, and I just graduated from Carondelet, and next year I'll be at Cornell. Right. All right. Hi, my name's Elise Goulart. I go to Livermore High School, and next year I'll be going to Westmont College. Ooh, great. Okay, you guys, here's the first question I want you guys to kind of reflect on. As you look back over these last few years, can you see some like defining moments that God has put in your spiritual journey? If you'd share those with us. Amen. Yeah, actually, I have an answer for that. Um, One of my most defining moments in my walk with God was last year at Hume Summer Camp. 
I really learned how to read my Bible. I sat down one day with Paige and we kind of just like started reading together and she's like, oh, this is like a verse that I really like, maybe start there. And she just kind of let me use her highlighters and we highlighted together and we wrote notes. And I was like, wow, like this actually is way easier than I thought. Like I'm connecting with God right now. Mm -hmm. And so I brought that back with me and this year, like my Lent goal was to read a Psalm every day. Mm. And so as I was reading them, I'd write down questions and bring them to Bill at Rock. And I'd be That's like, true. Bill, like, I don't yeah. get it. What's happening? And he would give me like this advice. And it was always so like impactful for me to mm. continue to be able to carry this outside of just camp. Mm. Nice. That's good. I think for me, uh, the biggest times I've seen God like show up in my life is when I really prioritize God in my own life every day. Um, and obviously the, the Mexico, the Hume Lake trips are super impactful, but I think that's also accessible every single day. When we take time to spend time with God and prioritize him, he shows up in really yeah. great ways. Yeah, I'm sure most of the students can agree that the trips that we go on are always so impactful every year. Um, for me, a really impactful moment of my life was at houseboats a couple years ago. I was kind of at like a still moment in my faith where I felt like God wasn't really moving. Um, and I used that trip. I stayed up late talking to all the youth leaders I could. Um, and I just read my Bible and I worshiped and God really moved that trip. And at the end of the week, I got baptized, which was really special. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. So good, so good. I love how each of you shared something different, which is really encouraging just to us, like how we can each focus on God intentionally by getting into the Word, by spending time with God, and just getting into community intentionally. So, so good. Um, so, I also wanted to know, so how have you guys been, like, how has being part of a community of believers, whether it's like in a youth group or at school, how has that been like influential or impactful in your lives? Um, so for me, being a part of a community has been, like a community like this, like Rock and CBC has been one of the most impactful things in my life. Um, I get to rely on these people and I learn from these people. Um, and we have like, we have godly brothers and sister relationships. And I get to grow closer and closer to them every day because I know that God is in the center of our friendship and that we get to keep pursuing our relationship with each other, but also with God. And I have like a firsthand experience with this because some of us uh, created a senior Bible study and it's basically just where a group of us seniors get together at one of our houses once a week and it's like the highlight of my week and we get to talk and listen to God and worship and all these like type of things and it's so amazing because God is the center of our friendships and like our circle and our circle of trust and it's so amazing and then also another experience for me is I go to a camp every summer called Mount Ida, Ar or camp, called Camp Ozark in Mount Ida, Arkansas. And it's so amazing because I've gone there for like nine or 10 years. And I've gone with the same girls for that many years. And it's so amazing to have that community and those people to turn back to whenever. And they're all from different states, but it's so amazing that we all have like one thing in common and that's God. Mm, that's good. That's good. Um. For me, so I'm, at, um, I'm in a senior um, guys group at Rock, and then I'm also in the senior Bible study group. And um, that's been impactful because going, um, going through a um, faith journey in high school is kind of rough. And when, you're, uh, when you have other um, high schoolers there, teens there to um, go, with it, or go through with it, it, it just makes it a lot easier. And um, it's great because we get to learn how to um, or we have two leaders, Kevin and Addy, and um, they teach us how to you know, read our Bible, mm -hmm. pray for each other. Um, and it's important to be in a group because if you, always, if you have any questions, you can always like, ask each other and we can pray for each other. So yeah, that's one way it's impacted like, my faith. So, nice. so good. How did you guys, just as an encouragement to others, how did you guys actually start the small group? Um, so we actually started, like Todd said, Kevin and Addy are our leaders. And basically one day, like around two years ago, we went up to them after rock and we were just like, we wanna start a Bible study. We feel so like stuck in our faith and that we just wanted more. And so a group, it was like around four of us, three of us even maybe, we got together and we started it about two years ago. And basically it's just grown ever since. And it's became like, like I said, the best part of our weeks. And it's just become this big thing that all of us get to walk with God. Mm, I love it. 
Um, I have another question for you guys. I know that several of you have had some opportunities to serve in ministry or to lead others in ministry. I would love just to, to have you share a little bit of how God has used that experience of, of serving and leading to shape your faith. Yeah, so I can answer that one. So I work at uh, CBC Kids um, every Sunday, uh, first through fourth graders, and I've worked there for about four years now, so and I enjoy it. Um, so what we do is we get there on Sunday, and we set up, uh, we'll hang out with the kids for about 10, 15 minutes playing basketball, football, games, and whatever, but then we'll get into our lesson, uh-huh. and um, it will normally be one of us high schoolers teaching the lesson, and um, at the end of the lesson, there's a bottom line, and it will be like, make sure to be, you know, be kind to your neighbors, and I'm like, have I really been kind to my neighbors this week? And it will like, kinda like, I'll like reflect on the bottom lesson, even though it's just for um, the first and fourth graders, I'll kinda like, it has like an impact on me, so that's like one way that I've, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's good, that's good. Uh, so for me, the main way that I've served here at CPC and at Rock is in the worship team at Rock. Um, I was playing the drums earlier, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then, uh, and, we'll always yeah, find and then Adrian every Monday the I'm playing, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm saying we'll always find you in the box. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, I'm also playing every Monday, and it's been so great. Because mm-hmm. um, uh, ever since I was a kid, like the main way I've connected with God is with worship and music. Mm-hmm. Um, and being part of this team, and, 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 uh, and having awesome leaders like Kyle and Nico and mm-hmm. Wyatt, um, on the worship team and them teaching me how to approach worship from a spiritual standpoint and just having a focus on God the whole time and not being so focused on playing the parts, right, or, mm-hmm. or uh, l- 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 learning new musical skills and all that, but just focused on glorifying God w- with the gifts that he's given us. Um, and, and that's been an extremely pivotal part of my, my walk with God. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity. Nice, I love that. Love that. Yeah, for me, I started volunteering at Wildside with Sarah Athern this past year. <laughs> um, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, Sarah, like, I'd love to get more involved at CPC. Like, I come to church on Mondays, but I just, I'd love to come here more. And she was like, dude, like, totally join Wildside. And so when I joined, I was really nervous because I was like, wow, these middle schoolers are actually way cooler than me. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> And so the more I got to like go to Wildside and the more I connected with the students there, the more I realized just like how amazing it is to be part of a community of people who might not even be in your age group. Like getting to talk to them about what's going on in their life reminds me of like what's happening in mine. How can I use what they're sharing with me about like what they've learned in the Bible and like put it in my own life. Mm -hmm. And like getting to hear the messages there, it's just so impactful to like connect with people and to remind these students like that they can keep doing it. That's awesome. We're so, so grateful for that. Thanks, yeah, thank Elise. And then our final question, my favorite question is, um, if you, how would you would want to encourage other students, or put, to put it another way, if you could kind of tell your younger self something, um, maybe as a freshman or a sophomore or a middle schooler, what would you want to say to them to encourage them in their faith journey? This is mine. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I want to encourage other high school students and even adults too that are still like stuck in their faith because I know how difficult it can be as a high school student and growing up in an area that is in school that is full of non-believers because it's so difficult to rely on people when you don't really have anyone to rely on. And so I really recommend like getting, going to rock and coming to CPC church, like all those type of things and leaning on those people and the people that bring you up and don't tear you down. And I know, I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but for me, I remember thinking to myself like freshman year when I was getting out of the car to go to rock for the first time and I was so nervous and I was scared and I didn't know anyone and I didn't go to SRVCA. So I was like not, that part of the group or whatever. And I went there and the like right when I stepped into the church, I immediately felt this like feeling of relief and this feeling of comfort and like community because I walked into like my new family and the people that I know are gonna be in my life for the rest of my, or in my life for the rest of my life. Mm. Mm. I think for me, I would just wanna have gone to rock sooner. I didn't start going until later on in my high school and it's just been really awesome ever since, so I would just encourage others to do the same. That's awesome. 
Uh, my main encouragement for kids that are entering rock uh, for the first time um, is to just be vulnerable, vulnerable and open in the, in the small group, because that's been the most important thing um, in our uh, small group, which I felt has been absolutely awesome um, just all these past years. I mean, I think a big part of that also starts with the leaders, um, because our leaders have always been, been so great with sharing their own life experiences and their walk with faith mm -hmm. and asking us uh, extremely deep questions um, for us to dig deep and reflect on our own thoughts and uh, experiences um, to, 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 to really just pursue after God. Um, yeah, and uh, being vulnerable and open just draws everyone closer together um, mm -hmm. and allows for us to hold each other accountable and support each other in our walks. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, to just tag off that, like just going for it. I know my family transferred to CPC mm -hmm. when I was like a freshman or a sophomore, and it was so scary going to Rock the first mm -hmm. couple times. I like dragged my friends from Lafayette. I was like, we have to go. Um, but once we got there and after those like first scary times, the community was just so incredible, and I'm just so lucky to be a part of it, but I wouldn't have gotten to know this community without just taking a step and going for it. Um, and I think the same applies mm. like next year when I'm in college. Yeah. I know going to a youth group for the first time will be scary all over again, but just mm -hmm. going for it and taking that initial step, I think it's just so important. Oh, I love that. I think like for me, the listening to you guys, a common thread is here is like stepping into something new or being vulnerable is it's scary, right? And it's this, I have that courage. So just thank you for your encouragement. And also thank you guys for being willing to be here today and for having us interview you. That's also courageous. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you so much. Absolutely. And you guys, something that we want to say to you and really to all of the students, even those that we didn't drag up here on stage, um, we love you guys. Uh, we are so proud of you guys. Um, we're gonna be praying for you as, as God is leading you into some, some new chapters, some new adventures, but you will always have a church home here at CPC, and we will always be, uh, be remembering you guys and praying for you guys. So will you guys just give them some thanks for being willing to share this morning? Yeah. Something that we want to do before we close is we want to pray for our students, not just the students here, but all the students that are with us this morning. So I'd like to invite every student here in the room, whether you are a little one or a college student all the way on up to just stand for a moment because we want to recognize you and pray for you. And then for the rest of us as our church family, we want to just um, extend, extend a hand of a blessing towards them as we pray. And then Kirsten is going to lead our prayer. Okay. Amen. Uh, Jesus, we just thank you for each and every one of these students, Lord. Each and everyone standing here and every student that might be watching from home, Lord, online. Lord, we thank you that you have made them in your image, Lord. That they are daughters and sons of the Most High God. Lord, that they are treasured and loved. And I pray, we pray, Lord, that they would know that. That they would know how, how much you love them, Lord. How much you care for them, Lord how much you are for them. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we just pray that, uh, that they would just walk in, in, in confidence, knowing that, that there's no junior Holy Spirit, Lord, that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in them, Lord, and that you have called them to be an influence in the world, Lord, and that they don't have to wait until they older adults, but they, they are influential right now, Lord, because they have your Spirit inside of them. And so, Lord, we just pray that um, you would just bless them with a hunger, Lord, a hunger to pursue you, Lord, to get into the Word, to spend time with you, to get into community, Lord. Would you give them that courage, Lord, to step into faith, to step into that beautiful relationship with you? And Lord, we pray that you would just stir up a passion and a fire in their hearts, Lord, to be the world changers that you've called them to be. Lord, we just pray your protection over them. We pray that you hedge them in. Lord, we just pray that you give them courage and strength. And we thank you for each and every one of them, Lord. Would you just help them to walk in everything that you've called them to, Lord? 
We thank you, Lord, that you are a good God and a good Father. May they experience you like that. We honor you and we give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. And then before you guys leave today, we have a prayer team after every service that um, we love to pray with you guys. Uh, we love to pray with people because there's power in agreement. So if you have anything in your heart that you want to be prayed for or you want to just to agree with you, we'd love to pray for you. We've also got students up here today that really want to pray with people. And if you don't have anything to be prayed for, come up and we'll just pray a blessing over you. Um, don't miss an opportunity like this to just pray with other people. All right. Friends, thank you for being a part of this church family that loves and supports our students. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Take care.